Everybody say the world. Father, bless us now as we minister the word of the Lord. With power and authority, in Jesus' name, we want to preach that which becometh sound doctrine and holiness. In Jesus' name, amen. The world. In verse 9, you find our Lord saying, I pray not for the world. In verse 11, our Lord says, Now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. Verse 12, he says, While I was with them in the world. The 13th verse, he says, These things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. It's joy while we're in the world. Verse 14, he says, And the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. And verse 15, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world. And lastly, in verse 16 of our text, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. From verse 9 through verse 16, the word world is mentioned 11 times. First John chapter 2 and verse 15, we find these words. John, the same writer who wrote St. John, said, Love not the world, neither the things that are of the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. In first John, Chapter 3, and verse 1, you find John, the writer, saying, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. 1 John chapter 4 and verse 1 says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Some people incorrectly quote this and say the Bible says, try the spirit by the spirit. No, we can't do that. Because um, how will you know you're dealing with the spirit? You test a spirit by biblical accuracy. You test a doctrine based on what it says about Jesus Christ. It says, uh, believe not every spirit, pneuma, doctrine, thought. Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits. Test what comes to your mind. Test what has been preached to you. I was blessed... Uh, Elder King and I to be at a pro-life affair with Sister Sharon Dooley last Thursday morning. And before it started, we were having breakfast together. And, um, she's just a brilliant lady. She was talking about uh, her children, very fine children. And her son is a connoisseur of information. He loves to read. And uh, as he reads and studies different, various philosophies, she asked, a very, um, asked him a very important question. He says, do you have a foundation? I'm 
paraphrasing her, that you test the legitimacy of all that you're reading from. You have something fixed in your life that you compare this stuff to. So there's a whole lot of thoughts and doctrines and things being said today. You got to have something in you fixed by which you compare everything else to. Amen. For the believer, that thing is the word of God. Hallelujah. Believe not every spirit, but try the spirit. Whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. And if you look at 1 John chapter um, 3, and if we read um, verse 3, through five, you'll see where he says, and every spirit that confess that confesseth not that Jesus is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, whereof you have heard that it should come. And even now already is in the world. That is every doctrine that confesseth that Jesus was not the Christ when he came. See, Jesus didn't become Christ. He didn't grow up to be the savior of the world. Jesus was the Christ when he was conceived in Mary. He was Christ, the Messiah, before he came, every doctrine, every demon, every thought that denies uh, the lordship of Jesus Christ, that denies Christology, that Christ is the Messiah, that is the spirit of Antichrist. Amen. And the Bible says there are many even now, where are they? In the world. Verse 4 says, you are of God, little children, speaking to the saints, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. Isn't that something? St. John, chapter 1. We're going to preach in just a few minutes. Chapter 1 of John's Gospel. And we're going to begin reading at the ninth verse. If you have it, say, I have it. It says... That was, speaking of Jesus, the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He, speaking of Christ, was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Isn't that amazing? The world. John chapter 3 and verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. People take this passage to mean that we shouldn't say anything that is convicting because God didn't send Jesus to condemn the world. 
He also didn't send Jesus to leave the world as he found it. The reason Christ didn't come to condemn the world is that the world was already condemned. That's why he came. He came to save. If you can only save that which is lost. Had the world not already been condemned, God wouldn't have sent a savior. The fact that the Savior came says that the world was lost. Otherwise, Christ would have never come. So the world was lost. The Bible says, verse 18, He that believeth on him is not condemned, is not declared guilty. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Did you see the word only there? Only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation. This is the sentence. Do you want to know why people go to hell? Here's why. That light is come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light. Because their deeds are evil. Error. Men love sin. Men love error. Men love wrong. More than light. Because their deeds were evil. There were things that they wanted to do that they were not willing to give up. This is why people are lost. The Lord doesn't send anybody to hell. You send yourself. Amen. The Apostle Paul said this, and it'll all come together if it hasn't already. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 19, to wit, to know that God was in Christ. Reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. The question then is, what is the world? What is this thing, this entity? That Christ loved enough to die for. In John 3.16. But he says in John chapter 17. I pray not for the world. What is this thing? That Jesus would not take his disciples out of. But pray they be kept while they are in it. What is the world? What is this thing that Christ loved but then told us not to love it? The Bible is clear. It says love not the world. And yet God so loved the world. What is this thing? I want to preach about the world. Everybody say the world. The world. They place already filled with antichrist. It already has antichrist functioning, operating in it. John said in 1 John 2 and 18, little children, it is the last time. And As you have heard that antichrist shall come, even now are there many antichrists. Hereby, here's how we know that it is the last time. Antichrist means instead of Christ. Opposed to Christ. Antithetical to Christ. Without Christ. Anything that opposes Christ. That replaces Christ. That is antithetical to Christ. 
that will give you the notion that you don't need Christ, that thing is anti-Christ. Ayana, fix my life. Oprah, feel. All of those so-called entertainment shows. Ellen and the rest of them that offer all of these instead of the Bible, without the Bible, without Christ, minus religion, minus biblical morals, even these shows you see that are supposed to be courtroom dramas, they're all doctrines disguised as entertainment. They all send the same message. And that is you can cope in this world, solve your problems, heal your marriages, live happily ever after, go to heaven. I saw Ayanna on one show. She, she performed foot washing on men. A Christless foot washer. And she prayed to somebody, a sacrilege, as she washed men's feet and that, that's not even Bible because we have feet washing here and men don't wash women's feet and the women don't wash men's feet our biblical example is that Jesus washed the men's feet did he not and when we have foot washing here the men go into the multi-purpose room and men wash each other's feet and the women do the same thing with the women Antichrist He's everywhere. He's everywhere. Let me, let me talk to you. I'm, I'm going to preach you just a minute. The, the word world, the world, world in and of itself is a nonspecific term for humanity in a general sense. Everybody say world. world. Now, let me give you a few uh, definitions. World... Uh, among the words that the word world come from, one of the words is the Greek words cosmos, which literally means that which pertains to space. Cosmos, space, not time. Time is eon, and I'll talk to you about that in a minute. But it's space. It is the sum total, the totality of the material universe, the beauty of it, and also the sum total of persons living in the world. The cosmos, the material universe, the Milky Way, and all that we know, the planets, the earth, and all the people. The Bible says this in Matthew 4 and 8, Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all of the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. The devil showed Jesus all of the wonderful cities and the glory of them, the landscaping and all the things that makes the world so beautiful. This, he showed him uh, uh, portions of the cosmos. King David said this. He said, the earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof, the world. And they that dwelleth, that dwell therein. Well, uh, the, the Old Testament is written in Hebrew. And the Hebrew word here for world, which deals with the physical planet, similar to what we just read in Matthew 4 and 8. The word is uh, tebel. It is the earth, the globe, its inhabitants, the physical planet. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and the world and they that dwelleth therein. The world and they that dwelleth therein. Now, in Romans chapter 12, are you following me? And verse 2, 
Paul says this, be not conformed to this world. Here, Tom, uh, Paul is not talking about the cosmos. He's not talking about the Tibet. He's talking about another Greek word for world, and it is the word eon, which refers to the age or the time. See, MacArthur said something about uh, the, the eon. He said uh, this word world translates eon, which is better rendered age. Follow me closely. Referring to the present sinful age. The world system now dominated by Satan. The Bible teaches in 2 Corinthians 4 and 4 that Satan is the god of this world. He's the prince of the power of the air. He's the god of this eon. He's not the god of the Tibet. He's not the god of the planet. The planet is the Lord's. God made the cosmos, but the cosmos contains the eon, the fashion, the style, the goings on that takes place on this planet. Everybody say world. Can you hear me today? The world represents, here it represents the sum total of demonic philosophy, of demonic human philosophy. It corresponds with the German Zeitgeist, which is literally the spirit of the age and, and has been described well, has well been described, and here's the world, and I've told you this before, a floating mass of thoughts, opinions, Maxims, speculations, hopes, impulses, aims, aspirations at any time current in the world, at any time current on the planet, which it may be impossible to seize and accurately define, but which constitutes a most real and effective power being the moral or immoral atmosphere which at every moment of our lives we inhale and inevitably exhale. We breathe in and we breathe out the world. Every moment of every day, it's all around us. It is amazing how the world changes all of a sudden, you look around. You want to see the world. You look around, and you see men in mass. Men in mass with their pants hanging off of their rear ends, showing their underwear. That's the world. You see people in mass with their bodies cluttered with tattoos. That's the world. You've noticed almost in mass, it seems like everyone's got the signal, we see more and more profanity. That's the world. Trends and styles and different things that come and go. It's as though someone got on the phone and called preachers all around the country and say, when you preach, put, on, put holes in your jeans and dress like you're on your way to clean up the backyard and you present the Bible looking as though you're doing nothing important. That's the world. You can't watch a commercial. Uh, I forget the name of it. I, I, I made a mental note. They're advertising some HIV medicine. And they tell the men, make sure you keep being homosexual. They show men, kissing men. Now, the, the thing that gets me about these marketers, they show this stuff any time of day. My grandchildren can be watching. Yours. 
anybody and seeing things that they've never seen before on television. Two men kiss. That's the world. As deviant lifestyles and ungodly philosophies are being shoved down our throats. And then they're telling us that this is normal or they claim that there's no such thing as normal. That's the world. The world gives you your truth, Brother Lester. And then I got my truth. Brother Murray, you have your truth. And Coach Lester, you have your truth. That's the world. Praise the Lord. When God's word is truth. You can tell your story. You can have your opinion. But you can't have your own truth. That's the world. Everybody say the world. And it's all around us. My, my wife, Pamela, on last Thursday night doing our uh, Vision Keepers in-house leadership conference uh, gave powerful, gave a powerful and insightful message entitled, Led by God's Truth. And she said this concerning the world. And this is a direct quote from her on last Thursday night. Having lived on earth, Jesus knew that the main thing that would hinder us from glorifying God with our life and work here on earth would be the evil in the world. Which has to do with the world's culture. It's a system of beliefs. It's standards it's, and behaviors that are antithetical to the beliefs and values that we subscribe to from the word of God. She went on to say, and what makes the world's culture so evil is that it is highly contagious in its in its nature is so of a highly contagious nature its ability to infect and contaminate and to be transferred to others the world is attractive yes the world is cool much wickedness have been sold to us and we bought in the name of fitting in and being cool and, and being down and being deaf and being with it. Yes, the world. The devil knows how to start a trend. And, and most people uh, aren't comfortable in their own skin. They don't have the, the strength to be an individual. So they, they, they practice groupthink. And they go along to get along. So then whatever the world says is all right then that's what they go along with. It is highly contaminated. Uh, it is highly contagious, excuse me. Easily transferred. It's easy to affect us. You know why? Because we love it. Now, the Turner had a preacher when I've, I'd been saved maybe a year or two to come down from uh, up north. The man was a, a drug dealer and, and a pimp and the Lord saved him and sanctified him, filled him with the Holy Ghost, and the uh, pastor had him to come and preach. And he said, I want to tell you all why drugs are so hard to get off of and so hard to beat and why people love drugs so much. And I, I slid to the edge of my seat because I wanted that answer. I, I, what, what could it be? What could the reasons be? And he gave the reason. He said, because it, they make you feel good. That simple. It appeals to our flesh. Oh, I'm going to show you. It's what the devil knows how to put stuff out there that our fallen human nature just likes. The world knows how to agree with you. Oh, that agrees with me. That must be of God. 
I always knew it was all right because I finally see somebody doing what I've been thinking about all the time. That's the way the world works. And most men, look at, look at how our young men walk in lockstep. If the world says walk like a monkey, monkey, we walk like one, but you just better not say that they're walking like one because then you're accused of being racist. The world says abandon your family, we do it. But if you accuse us of abandoning our families in mass, then that's racism. It's the world. Are you praying for me? That's exactly the contamination of the world. That's exactly what happened to Demas. Paul said, Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present eon, this present world. He liked what he saw. He was walking with Paul. He was part of Paul's team. He was in Christ. He was in the church. But man, the world, those women, that lifestyle, their music, their dress code, their way, it agrees with me. I like it. Oh, I like it. I ain't going to say anything because Paul would probably rebuke me, but I, I like it. Yeah. Demas is in here. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I'm, I'm part of Upper Room, but I don't care what he says. I just, man, there's just something about, I, I know they're cussing all that hip hop and stuff, but man, it just agrees with my spirit. I like it. I like it. Oh, I know I'm sitting here and I look like a man and I'm built like a man and I've got the biceps like a man. But I can't tell nobody I like men. See, I like it. That's the world. I'm dressed in these church clothes, but I, I really, I'm, I'm really ready to go join with those churches where you don't have to wear, you can, you can just show up in shorts. Because, you know, God ain't special. And uh, flip flops, and on the way in, they hand you donuts, and they give you coffee, and the preacher preaches a nice sermon. It's quiet, it's quiet. No noise, no disturbance. Five minutes in, five minutes out. And that really appeals to me more than this holiness. Why the pastor got to get up and say all that stuff? Why they got to sing so long and carry on the way they do? I, 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 I'd much rather be home watching the game. But I can't say it because, you know, they might think I'm not saved. Oh, it doesn't mean that you're not saved. But here's what it does mean. You need to recognize that that is the world. See, I'm, I'm trying to tell you what you're contending with. Oh, this kind of preaching make you uncomfortable. You know why? Because you're worldly. So when I leave, I'm never going to come back. Don't, but you're still worldly. I'm outdone. You're going to be undone. That's worldly. It's the world. It's the world. It's the way it operates. World. Eon. Not to veil. It wasn't the planet. But the eon, as in the system, that floating mass of maxims, opinions, speculations that constitute a real and immoral atmosphere that is real and immoral in that it is hostile to the Bible, antithetical to Christ, secular in nat nature, agnostic and atheistic in its underpinnings, favorable to false religions which at every moment of our lives we inhale and prayerfully exhale. 
The key is not to let it get locked up in you. I'm talking about the world, the cosmos, the sum total of the material universe and everything living in it and, that, and, and, and the influence, the things that go on in it called the, the age, the eon. The current styles and mores, that which is considered to be normal. Thousands of women, because the crowd was much smaller, march yesterday. They're marching, holding up signs, declaring their rights to kill the fruit of the womb. Women, notice sin makes a strange bedfellow. Same crowd of women who are marching with the signs that say we want to keep abortion legal, we want to kill our babies. Got other women marching with the homosexual flag, right? All about that together. Oh, you talking about? I said, Lord, look at the world. And then when they when they interview them, regardless to what station station you watch, and they and they put a mic in the in the in the mouth of those who are attending, they couldn't even really explain why they were there. They, they, they can't even explain why they are out there. Why are you out here in the cold marching like that? Well, we're women and with the things that are going on. What things? See, most reporters don't do good journalism. They don't, they don't do the follow-up questions. Well, the things, the laws that are being passed today, we just think they're immoral. The, the next question is supposed to be, what law? Make your case. What law? Well, you know, those laws. What law? Are you saying that it is immoral to declare that a human being should have a right to live? Are you saying that it is immoral to believe that marriage is a union between a man and a woman? I thought that you were people who believe in science, and who believe in biology, and yet it is those who claim to believe in science and biology who try to tell us that a man can turn himself into a woman. And that a woman can turn herself into a man. And that men go together. And women go together. Well now, there is science and biology. We can leave religion out of it. Science and biology. The human anatomy tells you that ain't gonna work. It's the world. Upper room, y'all getting quiet on me today. First John warns us of the dangers of the cosmos. Preach, wouldn't. We're warned of the dangers of it. It's dangerous. Of its ability to lure and to attract. How it appeals to some things that are already inside of us. The world appeals to our fallen human nature. Amen. How we all contend with lust. We all contend with pride. And yet, even though the world uh, tries to draw us, John tells us of the world's future. The destiny of the world is destruction. The Bible said, and the world passeth away. Amen. We're also told what love of the world, love of the cosmos will cancel in us. The Bible tells us that love of the world precludes love of the Father. The Bible says, if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. First John chapter 2, verse 15 and 16. I read it before. Love not the world, neither the things that are of the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. All that is in the world is the lust of the flesh. Our flesh craves the world. The lust of the flesh. The lust of the eyes. Why do you think the devil uses neon? Why do you think the devil uses lights? Flash. Lust of the eyes. What we see. What we see. Praise the Lord. What we see. Why do you think the most, the most uh, popular 
uh, medium is television. People need to see it. However it is presented, we, we see it. Say, well, I'm on Ruku or whatever. I'm on all these other different ones. Ruku, whatever. I don't know. But all of them are designed for you to see. To see something. To see something. See, because all that's in the world is the lust of the flesh. The lust of the eyes, and then the pride of life. Said these are not of the Father, these are the world. The Lord doesn't try to just appeal to your fallen nature. The truth is biblical Christianity goes against your fallen nature. Biblical Christianity goes against your natural lusts. Most men don't lust. One woman, lust all of them, till the Lord delivers them. Seriously, lust of the flesh. Seriously, I mean, I mean. Well, not me, preacher. That's fine. I said most men. I say all. Amen. That's the lust of the flesh. The flesh, the fallen part of us, that part of us that craves, that wants what it wants. Whether you're male or female, you want what you want. You want what you want, you want who you want, you want what you want. That's the part of us that the world appeals to. The world will keep a man from taking care of his family. The world will keep a man from growing up. You're still running around like you're in high school. That's the world. You got, you got children and there you go. You acting like a child. That's the world. When that, that come a time that you grow up and then you put away childish things. But the world will stunt your ma maturity. It will stunt your growth. The world, you know what the world does? The world pro prolong adolescence. You're 35, still living home with your mom and daddy. Oh, that's too long. That's the world. 40 is still running away from responsibility. That's the world. I want to grow up. I want to. I want to stay young forever. Old and great, still trying. That's the world. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. What is the pride of life? Things that we accomplish that make us feel good about ourselves. Oh, I could park right here for the rest of the day because some of us, we, we think more highly of ourselves than we ought to think based on our resume based on our background, based on our intelligentsia, based on who we think we are because of things that we have accomplished. What I have, I am, I am somebody. The Bible said when a man thinketh himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. And without Christ, we're all nothing let me let me let me move on but i heard john g butler when he dealt with the world and he he quoted vinson uh in his new testament studies uh, butler said the word world cosmos here represents human life apart from alienated from and hostile to god and the earthly things which seduce men from God. The world. Kenneth uh, West said this about the world in the uh, studies in Hebrew. Peter, John, and Jude. He said this about the world. Much of the world's system is religious. Listen. Cultured. Refined. Intellectual, but it is anti-God and anti-Christ. Oh, he's so right. Be careful how the devil sells you a bill of goods uh, by, just by being articulate. Sometimes the devil curse without using cuss words. It depends on what he's trying to put into law. 
Sometimes he'll sell you a wooden nickel, but he won't spit a verb. And you think it's all right because it sounds right. That's a trick of Satan. You got to pay attention. That's, that's his ability to lure. He knows how to talk. He knows how to enunciate. He knows how to pronounce. He knows how to do these things. He conjugate his sentences. He sounds smart. He sounds wise when all he's selling you is a one-way ticket to hell. It's the world. It's designed to separate you from God. The God of your childhood. The God you learned about in Sunday school when you were a child. That God is still God. And I know, I know you did like Oprah. You've grown up. And you've grown beyond the scriptures. And you're wiser in your own mind than, than you used to be. And those, those, those silly church folk way back home in that country church down in the woods. That's exactly what the world wants you to think. That's exactly what Satan wants you to think. So you can take your sophisticated self right on to hell as fast as possible. That's the world. Everybody say the world. Let me uh, get ready to land this plane. In Genesis 1 and 1, we find the most common Hebrew synonym for world. That is the Tebel world. And the most common synonym is the word erects, translated earth. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the erects and the earth. A physical planet. The earth opposed to the sky. The earth and its inhabitants, the soil, and even the ground, and every living thing. From Erex, we get the Tabel, which basically means the same thing. Hannah prayed. I'm headed somewhere. She prayed and said in 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 8, He raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lifted up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. The pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he hath set the world upon them. Did you hear that? The pillars, the world leaders of the earth erects are the Lord. Everybody's in God's hand. And he set the world, the tabel, upon them. God takes down one world leader and God sets up another. He's God over the whole earth. What is the point of Hannah's prayer? Hannah recognized that God is in control. See, while I'm telling you about the world, I don't want you to, I don't want to give you the impression that we can't be kept. That we can't make it because we can. Yeah. Hannah prayed and said in, in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 9 and 10, Hamus, Santa, Hannah said he will keep the feet of his saints. That is, he will guard and protect. I'm glad that I serve a God who's a keeper. He will keep the feet of his saints, and the wicked shall be silent in darkness. For by strength, Shall no man prevail. Mm -hmm. She said the adversaries of the Lord shall be broken into pieces. Out of heaven he shall thunder upon them. The Lord shall judge the ends of the earth. And shall give strength to his king. And exalt the horn of his anointed. Right there she began to get, she got a little messianic and begin to prophesy about Jesus. I'm glad that there's no force on earth that can stand up against God. And uh, Jesus knowing that he was about to leave here, knowing that his time was up, looked up toward heaven and said, Father, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but I pray for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. I want you to know today that Jesus has prayed for us. Good God Almighty, and we belong to Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus said in verse 10, 
all and all mine are thine and all thine are mine and I am glorified in them I belong to Jesus I belong to God and all I got to do is when the devil is trying to destroy me is to make sure I stay on task what is my task my task is my assignment is in every situation learn to glorify God oh Lord I want you to know no matter what's going on the Lord wants you to glorify him in it don't let the devil give you a bad case of the blues don't let the devil make you all hallelujah depressed and make you sit there with your arms all folded oh Lord but you ought to show him that I have an assignment even though it may be raining in my life good God almighty I'm not an orphan I'm not homeless I'm not fatherless I'm not alone I belong to somebody I belong to God yes do I have anybody here who will lift your hands and say I belong to God I'm the Lord's property I'm the Lord's property. He's responsible for me. He's responsible for every step I take. Woo, Lord. He's responsible for every move I make. Hallelujah. I'm his and he's mine. And I heard Jesus. He said, and now I am no more in the world. I'm getting ready to leave the cosmos. I'm getting ready to leave the Tabel. Wow! Oh, I'm getting ready to leave uh, this age. But these are in the world. I'm leaving them here. I'm leaving them in this sin cursed place. I'm leaving them in this crooked place. I'm leaving them here in a place that is ruled by the prince of the power of the air. I'm going to leave them and I'm going to the Father. But ah, Father! Oh, Lord! Ah, Father! I want you to keep them through thy name. Keep them. I know you're able to do it. And while you're keeping them, Keep them and make them one, even as we are one. You ought to hug your neighbor and say, we're one in the name of the Father. Ah, one in the name of the Son. One in the name of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to make it. You're going to make it. We're going to make it. We're going to make it because greater he that is in us he that is in us I said he's in all of us ah, greater. Ah, greater. he that is in us then he that is in the world you ought to praise him with a victory praise Just begin to praise the Lord if you know you're going to make it. We're going to make it. We're going to make it. We're going to make it. I think about you and I get fired up. There are times when the load gets heavy. There are times when the going gets rough. But I think about John. I think about Anthony. I think about Tony. I think about the saints, and I said, if God is keeping them, then God is able to keep me. Oh, Lord, the same God who's keeping Leroy Jackson Woolard, he's the same God who's keeping me. You ought to look around at your brothers and sisters and say the same. Who 
who's keeping them is the same God who's keeping me because we're in this together. We're in this together. Yeah. Yeah. Come on and shout. Hallelujah. Shout. Praise the Lord. I rebuke it right now. What did you just rebuke? I rebuke all, all flu virus. <laughs> Grab your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor. We ain't gonna catch the flu from one day. Say, neighbor, not I, but we, not just me, but you and me, we, we're gonna make it. With Jesus on our side, everything will come out fine. We're gonna make it in the world, in the world, in the devil's face, in the world. Trouble everywhere, but God is a keeper. The devil's on every side, but God is a keeper. Sickness everywhere. But he is a keeper. Yeah! Woo! Woo! I love to just get 10 people. I don't need no more about 10 to just walk around. See, and you're not walking around symbolizing walking around heaven. But we're going to walk around on this earth in the travail with the victory. I got victory over the enemy and the world can't do me no harm. If you got it, you ought to praise God for it. If you got it, you ought to tell God, thank you. Victory over the devil. Victory over the enemy. I thank God for being good to me. I thank God for being a way maker. I thank him. And the truth keeps marching. It's marching on. The truth is, he's prayed for us. The truth is, the world's gonna hate us. Y'all stop trying to get along with Hollywood. Stop trying to get along with the world. Stop trying to get them to like you. Just live it. Just live it. If you live it, God will do the rest. If you live it, the Lord will show himself strong on your behalf. Somebody praise him right now. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it in the world. The truth is, he's my keeper. And then I heard him pray and say, uh oh, sanctify them. Woo! I'm in the world, but set me apart. I'm in the world, but sanctify me. I'm in the world. But separate me, won't he do it? Separate me from the sin of the world. Oh, separate me from their ways. Keep my mind from their doctrine. Separate me from their liquor. Separate me from their drugs. How many want to be sanctified? How many want to be separated? Hey, hey Lord. Separate me. Woo! This is 
is what I want. I want, I want the world. I want Jesus. I want Jesus to keep me. Keep me. You, hey, you know something? You can't stop this. I'm for preaching. Can't stop it. Truth marches on. Oh, Lord. Oh, somebody neck, okay. Okay. Somebody neck is broke. But it's all right. You know how holiness is? Holiness will break your necklace. It'll make your wig go sideways. Your slip might slip. But it's all right. It's all right. Where brother? Where brother Jude? Where's Jude? Where brother Jude? Come here, Jude. Mm-hmm. Oh Lord, you ought to tell the devil you can't stop this. God's truth keeps marching on. Oh Lord, I want you to stand right here and, and, and face the people. A soldier. Do I have about five more? Wat Ferguson. Come on down. Oh Lord. Good God on my these soldiers. These enlisted men. They represent God's truth. Hallelujah. That's what I'm talking about. Oh Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah! Do I have any ladies who might be enlisted? Well, come, come here, you know you served. You still got it. Hallelujah. Look at her. You see what happened? Her rank. You can tell when she started walking. Her military service cut in because she straightened up. She stiffened up. Got ready for war. My God, what does somebody tell? What do I need to say? I want y'all to march in place because the truth marches on, on and on and on. The truth marches on. Woo! Well, yeah. Woo! Somebody ought to march. The truth marches on, on and on, on and on and on, on and on and on. Truth marches on, on and on, on and on and on, on and on and on. Truth marches on. For the wrong I've done, hey now, sometimes we stop, say hello, but the truth marches on, on and on and on. You know the truth. He's not a young man, but he's old as time. Stays on my mind. God's on and on, on and on and on, on and on and on. on, on, and on, on, and on. Let the light shine on through the rain and storms. Sometimes that days the nothing but wrong. But the light shines on, on and on and on. Yeah. You know the truth is a light. Stop and do what is right. Sleep by the night. God is on. His march is on. Every day it shines at night And for the cause we will fight I got a smile on my face I'm gonna do everything
thing that he said He had to my soul Somebody sang the truth Marching on and on The truth marches Marches on Could I get a witness here? You ought to wave your hand If you know the truth Marching on You can't stop me You can't block me Marching on, marching on. One more thing, you know the truth. He's not a young man, but he's old as time. Stays on your mind. Clap your hands for it. Woo! Say amen for these mighty. Then hop. Can I get somebody else to come on and march with me? Can I get another soldier? March on. Hell is marching. March on. Gotta keep on marching here. Marching on. Marching on. Marching on. The devil can't stop it. The devil can't block it. The devil can't stop me. The devil can't turn me around. The devil can't. It can't even block me, mother. It can't stop me, mother. I gotta keep on marching. You don't have any soldiers. Gotta keep on marching. Gotta keep on marching. The world can't stop us. The world can't turn us around. The world can't do it. The world came to it. Wave your hand. Marching on. Just praise the Lord. Give our soldiers a big hand. Thank you all. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. On this clothes. On this. On this clothes. On this clothes. On this conclusion of our leadership. I want to pray for some people who want to be energized to fight the good fight of faith and to make it not just when we get to heaven because when we get there that's brother Robertson killed it today that's the ultimate but I want to make it for Jesus here on earth while I'm in the events the Tibet walking in the midst of the cosmos in this wicked eon I want to show the world that God's a keeper. That Hannah got it right. He will keep the feet of his saints. Run to the altar. He's a keeper. You know the Lord is fortifying us for the next round. I don't know what's next, but I know something is. Hallelujah. Satan tries so hard to stop us. But 
There's no power on earth that can block it. God's truth just keeps marching on. God's truth keeps marching on. Lift your hands and begin to worship right now. Said, so preacher, it felt like a pep rally today. Good. That beats service feeling like a morgue or a wake. <laughs> Glory to God. He's a keeper. He's an anointer. Thank you. Glory to God. Father, we just come before you right now. You know, I, I tell you what I want you to ask God to do. If you follow my lead, you're going to get something. The Lord said, I tell everybody on the altar to ask me to fill them with the Holy Ghost. So a preacher, I have the Holy Ghost. Ask the Lord for a refilling. But if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you won't keep the fire that we're talking about right now. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, you'll fizzle out. You know what? I wouldn't stop till God filled me and he, and he let me speak in tongues. Woo! Glory to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, fill us, Lord. Fill us, Lord. We can't make it down here in this world without the Holy Spirit. The world is too wicked. Its thoughts are too wicked. Its ways are too wicked. The world is too wicked. It's all around us. In the name of Jesus, we're like human beings in the ocean. Water all around us. We're trying to hold our breath. We're underwater, but we can't hold it but for so long. God, you got to give us gills. God, you got to give us something that will let us breathe. You got to give us something that will bless us to sail on top of the water in the name of Jesus. Still in the ocean, but safe on top of the water in the name of Jesus. And that is the Holy Ghost. Somebody ought to call him. Feel me. Feel me, Jesus. Feel me again. Feel us, Lord. We want the Holy Ghost. We want the Holy Ghost. We want your spirit. Come live on the inside. Baptize us, Lord. Baptize us, Lord. In the name of Jesus, baptize us and fill us with the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. And the cup of a shot. And the right shot that I will say. The Holy Ghost is our keeper. The Holy Ghost is our anointing. The Holy Ghost is our comforter. The Holy Ghost is the third person of the Godhead who comes to live in us the moment we accept Jesus. But then, Lord, there is the baptism and experience and experience and experience that many have not had baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. Don't pray for healing. Don't pray for finances. Don't pray for your mama. Don't pray for your daddy. Pray for the Holy Ghost. Pray for the Holy Ghost. Ask him to feel. Ask him to feel you. Ask him to deliver. Ask him to set you free. All you need is the Holy Ghost. All you need is the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will let you walk right. The Holy Ghost will bless you to talk. Talk right. Feel the Lord. Feel. Feel. 
feel, 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 feel. I can't face the world without the Holy Ghost. I can't make it, Lord. Hey, 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 hey. Woo! It's too much without the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Feel me, Lord. You know, you know me, Lord. You know me, Lord. Feel, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She want the Holy Ghost. She want the Holy Ghost. She want the Holy Ghost. Woo! Feel me, Lord. Feel. Do you want the Holy Ghost? You got to want to be feel. Crowd, crowd, crowd. Hallelujah. Jesus, feel me, Lord. Feel me, Lord. Feel me, Lord. Feel me, Lord. Feel me. Hey, God. Jesus. 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 The world is too wicked. Satan is too pervasive. The devil is too strong. The devil is too strong. Feel. Feel me. Feel me, Lord. Feel me, feel me, Lord. Jesus, feel me, Lord. Feel me, Lord. Feel me, Lord. I can't make it off my mama's Holy Ghost. I got to have him for myself. Feel me. So it become real when the Holy Ghost gets on you. It becomes real. <laughs> 